Today, I will play four games with the London system. For a very long time, I've been a hater of this opening. Until my friend Alex Vanzea sent me this video to teach me how to start playing this opening in a fun way. Let's take some notes, guys, and then we're going to play it. This is pretty much what the London system looks like, but I want to show you the move order first. So we start with the pawn, and let's just say uh, Black is a little tismed out, and he just makes no moves. We develop the bishop, then we develop the knight, pawn to e3, develop the last bishop, and uh, only then we push c3, uh, making sure to secure this bishop, followed it up by uh, developing the last piece with knight b to d2. This opening can pretty much result into three typical middle games. Uh, first one of them being uh, the 95 plan, while having the bishop on f4, when you can play the very nice maneuver. Queen f3, queen h3, followed by g4, g5. Uh, the biggest idea being to try and checkmate on h7. This is pretty much the most important plan that I want you to keep in mind. For the second uh, <clears throat> plan, uh, this is just a variation uh, of what we uh, just seen. Uh, and it happens when uh, we play knight e5, but the bishop is on g3. So notice that uh, the queen maneuver no longer possible. And for that, uh, the point is to follow it up with pawn to f4, get the kind of uh, reverse stonewall structure. And the uh, idea is to play uh, still queen f3 and then activate the bad bishop. As a quick mention, whenever they take, I want you to always take it back with a pawn, um, putting pressure on the enemy knight. And kind of the last thing uh, about this, when you will be having uh, the double pawns, uh, still, same idea, kind of remains the same. Notice that you don't have to rush with uh, short castle. And in case of 95, uh, I want you to repair your pawn structure. Um, and then you can follow it up uh, with pretty much similar ideas. Now that you already know the move order and the main plans, there are uh, two typical tricks to pay attention. When black is going bishop to d6, I want you to only play bishop to g3 when the enemy pawn is on c5. Otherwise, I want you to completely ignore it and uh, allow the double pawns on f4, which is actually what's going to happen in most of your games. Now, the last trick to keep in mind is about the copycat. Uh, so when they just uh, mirror with bishop f5, uh, notice that uh, bishop g4 uh, is bad in view of knight e5. Whenever you can do this, white is already much better. But on the copycat, I want you to do the same setup, but to take on d3 with the pawn, with the pawn to just develop the knight and then uh, push in the center, castle short. And why is slightly better? In case they don't take and they play bishop to g6, I want you to just go knight e5 and grab the bishop pair. Bonus trap. If black is playing the king's Indian, this is pretty much the only setup where I want you to deviate. Okay, g6 is the king's Indian move setting up the fianchero, here we can go for the job avalon and with knight to c3. In the next part, I simply want you to push e4, e5. The only idea that you need to keep in mind is that most people will play uh, something like this. They take on e5, they enter the end game, they attack the bishop, we ignore, and uh, because, uh, oops, knight a6 uh, can simply be captured, they will generally fall for the trap thinking that we're gonna be taking their rook and then the knight gets trapped but we're not gonna do that we're gonna go for the mate in one so i think that is pretty much all you need to know for now let's go we have the white pieces and i'm playing the london system for the first time actually it's not exactly the first time because i've already played the london as a dare but that's the first time with a guide okay let's try to follow the plan we go with the bishop out and then we're going to bring the knight the pawn here uh the bishop there and then at the end the spawn Okay, they are going with the knight there, which shouldn't be like the best move because the knight here is kind of blocked. The knight cannot go forward. Okay, I think they want to play the movie 5. It seems like very straightforward. Alex didn't mention this, but I think this is a mistake because the pawn is just would be just hanging on e5 and f6 is a weakness is a weakness because now the king is exposed and this knight cannot go out. So I will just keep following my plan. I will go with the pawn here and then I will bring the bishop there. And then I will maybe castle. It's going to be all right. The only thing is that I can't follow the plan of knight e5. But also my opponent has lots of problem developing. All right, the bishop is looking. Uh, I will keep going with my plan. I know that after bishop g4, Alex was suggesting to go on e5. But now I cannot go because the pawn is there. Maybe I just got trapped. <laughs> because e5, am I losing a piece? <laughs> 
Because after bim boom, I have to move. Okay, I. Oh man. I just lost a piece, I think. Yeah, I fell straight into a trap. I'm going to take there. And now, if I move this bishop, there is a fork. And if I go he like here, they can take. Okay, I will have to try this. They have a good move, which would be to take here first, and then this bishop would be hanging. That's not an easy tactic to see, and it's my only chance, basically. <laughs> because if not, I just lost a piece. Oh my gosh, they know it. So I'm a piece down, Alex. This was a success. <laughs> I'm going to take this pawn and try, uh, well, try to swindle this game. How to save lost positions? You have to, first of all, never give up. And try to create some problems for your opponent. Always ask what's their idea. They want to go with the knight out, which would be attacking or queen. This is clear. Is there something that we can do that would create them a problem? I was thinking about bishop there attacking this knight, but there is the very natural move. Knight there, protecting the knight, I have to move my queen. So I will just go with the knight out and I'm ready to long castle. I think like development is important. Oh wow, long castle. Now if this bishop moves, my queen is shaking. I think I might go also long castle. And there is some idea. There are some ideas. If this bishop moves, this rook could be in danger. Right now it's not a big deal. But maybe one day the knight is attacking my queen. I feel like this check makes sense. I'm a piece down. <laughs> but now maybe knight here could be something. But then I just lose this pawn. And after this, the queen is still that square. <sighs> I thought I could win the queen. But okay, I see a few nice things, so it's worth it. I'm giving a fork to the queen and the bishop. And the point is, just maybe my knight could jump forward on g5 and then give a nice fork on f7. Remember, at the end of the day, it matters how many active pieces you have. It doesn't matter how many pieces you have in total, but if you like have three active pieces and your opponent has three inactive uh, sorry six inactive pieces so double as much uh, as much as, as you you might still be winning if you can attack the king and give mate all right this square is thinking you want to trade the queens i prefer not to <laughs> so i will just go there all the way here and now i'm threatening already something deadly you know it doesn't matter if my opponent has all these pieces if i can use just those two to give mate and also the bishop needs to help me because my next move could be knight to c5. I'm threatening mate and also attacking the queen. If the queen moves, it's checkmate. If the bishop takes the knight, the free knight, I'm taking the queen and suddenly I will be winning. So they have to be really careful here. I think they need to move the queen away, maybe there. They are going to take this pawn. It makes sense. Let's go with the rook here, attacking the queen. This position is still completely lost. <laughs> but now the queen is just one square, which is this one. Oh, okay, also that one. I will go with the knight here no matter what. And now the knight is sneaking on f7 for a nice little fourth. It's still not... We are still not back, but the advantage is now reducing for them. The queen is attacked. We'll move the queen there, so we are attacking the knight as well. And still the two rooks are trying for help. Which rook to capture? This is important. You always need to capture the rook on the corner. Because even if that is for, for the moment is the least active rook, you are basically inducing the other one to a bad position. Now we take a free pawn because we love those. And we still have um, a rook and my opponent has two pieces. So it's, it's two minor pieces. So it's still like material wise is not amazing for us, but it's much better. Now it's actually equal. Because we have a rook and a pawn, so 5 plus 1, 6 points, in exchange of 3 minor pieces, 3 plus 3, also 6. I'm so good with maths. The queen has to move, move away. We try to keep it towards the center of the board. The knight is trying to be a little bit more, a little bit too fancy because this one is hanging. And yeah, this was a fork, but my bishop is protected by a pawn, which is enough. And now we are winning. And we take back. We have those pawns that are a little bit weak. For example, if the queen goes there, it could be attacking already two pawns. Uh, but I think we could just go back with the queen there. And we are protecting both of them. And that's how we keep going. Exactly following the plan. In every position, a very useful, uh, a very useful plan is to activate all your pieces. Always improve your worst piece. 
So this rook needs improvement. But rule 0 0.5, you need always to take care of your opponent's last move. What's their idea? They want to take there, which would be a free pawn for them. And I don't want to give it to them. So I'm just going to push. So we block the diagonal for the queen. Also, we are controlling the square, which would have been a nice check for them. Now, again, what's their idea? Okay, they moved the queen. It seems innocent, but there is a threat, this pawn. So I'm going to move my king, protecting this pawn. Also bringing my king towards a safer square, because now there are no checks anymore. Now, there is a free pawn also here. Another thing to ask is, every time your opponent moves a piece, did they leave something unprotected? We'll take it. Free cheese macaroni, we we'll like it. This is a fun move. I can't take, oh no, my bishop, because the queen would be hanging. So I'm just bringing the other rook to the party. And then I might start to push this pawn. I might start to make it run. The queen is moved away. And now we can see a very nice uh, tactic idea. I'm removing myself from, I'm unpinning my, my pawn. And I'm offering to trade of queens. Now, either they trade the queens or they will lose another piece. And trades are always good for you when you are up on material. Because it's so much easier to win this without the queens. I'm taking now back. This bishop has to move. And then, like, it's so easy. It's so simple to just let this pawn push without having to worry about a possible checkmate or a possible counterattack. There is a pawn hanging now. We just play boop, protecting with the rook, and then let it go. Let it go. I'm a great singer. <laughs> Okay, we can also go to trade the rooks if we want. I think their plan is to go there and then to take the spawn. But we are just going to trade the rooks. They remove the king so that I cannot trade the rooks. But okay, I will just push the spawn. That's, that's enough. I can let you take that one. You can take it. Feel free to take it. I'm just going to promote. I'm just going there. They can actually take all of them. But my pawn is just too advanced. Yes, I'm playing rook there and now... There is a nice red carpet in front of this pawn that can be promoted. GG. Short analysis because we have a very important concept about the London system. Even if you usually develop the pieces in the same way, you have to be careful because there are lots of traps that are exploiting the fact that you might repeat them like a machine. This is one example. Here, in order to simply avoid this, what can we do? Either we develop the bishop here so that there is not a fork on e4, or we can go with the bishop back here so that this doesn't come with temple. Uh, what else could we play? We could also play h3 just to ask a question to this bishop. Uh, we could also maybe play bishop b5, pinning this knight. So many moves, just not bishop d3, which is a big blunder. New game. Let's go. We have again the white pieces. Let's try to redeem the London. Let's go. Here we have it. They are playing c5, attacking the center. I think here I can just go out with the knight, protecting the spawn, and then I can keep going with my development. The knight is out, and we play e3, protecting the spawn one more time. a6, probably avoiding bishop b5. So I'd accept to play bishop d3 before playing the move c3. So we listen. I was just wondering what about c4, but I think I can just go with the bishop back there. There we go, and then castle, and I should be alright. The point is that my opponent already decided that they want to keep attacking on the queen side, but they are no longer fighting for the center, because now my pawn there is super stable. I'm going to castle, then I'm placing a knight on, uh, the, on e5. The only point is that this bishop is a bit out in the way. I would love to bring, sorry, I would love to bring the queen to give a checkmate. But it's not possible at the moment, but maybe later. I could maybe start something slower, bring the knight here, bishop there. All right, we play knight e5 and maybe we are trading this bishop. The bishop is taking, we take back. Guys, a very important thing. I'm playing for my speedrun account, so don't worry about the points of my opponent. If I win the games, they get the points back. If they win the games, they also keep the points because they beat a very strong player, so they deserve them. Uh, so there is no risk for them, it's just for educational purpose. And here, I traded my bishop that maybe was not so good to trade. I don't know if, if, if a London system player is proud of that bishop. But okay, Alex said usually to take with the pawn. I, I will follow his idea. <laughs> now I'm attacking the knight and I can see something spicy. I could sacrifice a pawn. All right, can I do that? Pawn takes this, pawn pushes, I got this. 
Hmm, and then I th at, at least I will take back the pawn. So let's go with e6. And after pawn takes, I will go with the queen here, giving an annoying check. And after g6, I will play queen e5, attacking the rook and attacking the pawn. After rook there, I'm taking the pawn back. There we go. We follow the plan. There we go. We attack the rook. We attack the pawn. The rook has to move to the only square, and then I'm going to take, and the rook is still under attack. If the rook moves again, I'm going to go with the bishop, and then the rook is lost. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, the knight goes back. This makes sense. I'm going to take this pawn anyway. Uh, it was a smart move to go back with the knight. So maybe they had to, in order to avoid the idea of queen e5, when I was attacking the knight here, they had to go there. So they are controlling this square. Probably this was the best move. Anyway, material is still equal, so they, they did quite a good job up to now. Knight is out, looking at his pawn. The problem is that they can't castle. They cannot castle. And if we play queen deer, I can take knight takes, then take this pawn with the knight, threatening a fork. Okay, they're moving the rook is not so exciting. Maybe the rook could go there attacking the queen. I will play rook there, looking at the pawn on d5. I'm attacking it three times. Yeah, they are, they don't care. <laughs> they are just attacking my queen and say, get out of there. Now, no problem. I will go with the queen there and you might say, what? You're crazy. But now that the knight moves, if the knight would have moved to any other square, I could have captured the bishop. But now I can capture the pawn. And yeah, there are trades, but both my pieces, minor pieces are protected. So I actually want a pawn. If the queen takes, if I take with the knight, maybe this pawn is hanging. But I will still do that because after the bishop takes here, oh, okay. Uh, I could have, I can play just rook there and then go to take this pawn. But now I saw that maybe this is just a blunder because the pawn can protect, can play c3 and protect the bishop. But I think it should be all right because after this, I still have knight there. But then there is rook b6. <laughs> That's tricky. Yeah, there is this and then rook there, I think. Yeah, the problem for them is that now they cannot move this bishop away. It's like uh, stuck there. And also this rook is stuck. So with one rook stuck, I have one rook stuck because if I move, then they can move both pieces. I'm stucking two pieces because they can't move the rook. Ah, oh, no, they can move the rook. What am I talking about? <laughs> All right. Uh, that was, uh, it was a mistake. <laughs> I'm going to defend this knight because it is in a very powerful position right now. They want to take this pawn. How dare you? Yeah, that's very strong, actually. Okay, I will activate my rook. I can just take this pawn for free. They are good players. I will just play rook here. I want to take this pawn. And they could trade the rooks, but that's okay. This bishop is still a bit stuck there. And I have very active pieces. Even if I am one full pawn down. And those pawns are really dangerous. Yeah, I think that's a good move. I will go with the rook there. I'm threatening mate, huh? <laughs> and if they castle, maybe I'm in time to... Okay, I could take simply this pawn. But maybe I'm also in time to activate this knight. I think I will just take this pawn. And maybe we can, we can give a very annoying checkmate. Knight there, knight here, knight there, knight here, and rook there. Could be something. Yeah, they go with the rook there, which is smart. But my knight is now leading towards the king, just closing down. Remember, the rook and the knight are a great team. There are so many checkmate patterns with those two pieces. Okay, I give a check. Now, if they go there, they are check... <gasps> I blundered, guys. I should have traded the rooks first. Okay, it's still, it's still okay. Oh boy, because after this, basically, my rook is also hanging. And if I take, I know I will take there and hope that I just take directly, but I could take this rook as well. Oh boy. Okay, I'll take there. I'm giving a check. And now if they go here, there is a fork. And if they go there, I think I can just protect my knight with the rook and I should be all right. <laughs> but it's also very, very, very much, uh, very much dangerous. And it's still not over because those pawns are now quite strong okay i will push this one and now knight there i start to see some ideas i'm attacking the rook and also looking for this check maybe i'm going to take that pawn here is crazy that i need basically to do two things at the same time push my pawns and stop their pawns it's a very complicated task but now i, sh I think i should be able to take here uh the king is nearly checkmated <laughs> 
I'm attacking the rook. Ooh, the rook, the rook. Goodbye, rook. You have been a great friend. You have fighted well. Now my rook is blocking the pawn, which is very important. I give a check, a very important check as well. Now the king has to go back there and then we can just run. Let it go. Let it go. Let the pawn go. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, they will play bishop there. This is pretty much the only move. Then can we simply push there? I think yes. Because after bishop there, we are pushing even more and then promoting. My opponent wants to chat with, with me and is clapping me. Thank you. <laughs> So guys, again, I think like this was a moment where I made a wrong decision. I again went like like a machine towards my bishop on d3. But there was the move c5 and then my bishop felt without space and I generally had few space to create an attack. That's why rather than playing bishop d3, I would suggest to play first c3. So that then you can go with the bishop there. And if the pawn is pushing, you have this square. So the bishop is still looking there. You can still go with the knight there. Play queen f3, queen h3, give mate. Let's go. We try to play a good London. <laughs> Let's go with the bishop out. And knight there again. Okay, we'll go with the knight here. Let's see if they go with the trap. I've now learned that this is a trap. Okay, bishop there. But now I will play knight there. This is what Alex told me. I'll go with the bishop there. And I have already developed my pieces quite nicely. I cannot push e3 because this bishop would be saying hi to my queen. I cannot let that happen. But I will find a way to develop everything. Maybe I will change my plan. And you know, I will get out of the London setup. Because I think this is the tricky part of the London setup. That if you are so obsessed about maintaining your idea, make playing your moves, you might end up in bad positions. When, if your opponent plays something different where maintaining the London setup is not a great idea. So now the two bishops are facing each other. I will bring the queen. Let's bring the queen up there, protecting uh, the bishop as well. They are taking, but now I'm taking like this. I'm saying, ha, surprise. I'm also opening up. Ooh, they lost a piece. I think they just lost a piece. You see, deviating forward from the system. It was a good idea. Now the bishop is lost. Already trapped. This F5 was a really bad move. All right. And I think we take there. They protected with the knight. So now I'm left with two weak pawns. But I need to. As always. <gasps> I missed that. Hoy oh boy. Okay, never mind. Let's give this check. I want to go take this. Um, that. Um. Yeah, that pawn also attacking the rook and looking at this other pawn. Yeah, now I'm attacking the rook and how to protect it? Not so simple. The point is the knight can come back, but it's going to be very slow. My next move is going to be e5 and then bishop there and then bishop here, which is checkmate, everyone. All right, let's go with e4 following our plan. Yeah, they're just bringing the knight out. But I think now I can say, oh no, my rook. Oh no, my poor rook. Because I'm threatening check. Rook covers and checkmate. They take here is exactly the same. So they need to do something about the mate. But I'm not sure if they have a good defense here. Okay, queen e7 looks actually quite good. So I kind of don't want to trade the queens. But maybe I have to trade the queens. If I don't want to lose the rook. Yeah, queen e7, I think it's really strong. Give a check. The king will have to move, but then I have to trade the queens. If not, I lose even more material. Oh my gosh, what's this? This is actually really bad because I'm going to lose so much material. Maybe to give the check was also not smart. <laughs> I will play rook there. I really don't like this opening. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't blame on the opening because the opening made me win a piece. And then I just blunder right after, so I should have just played something else. I will go with the knight hoping to get some, like, some crazy counterplay after going with the knight there. What do we play? So can we leave this hanging, like, play this? I mean, that is for sure bad, so let's go back, let's skip the bishop, please. And then maybe bring the knight there, maybe the rook here, once the knight is moving back there, because this is a very nice square for them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go into nice squares. Don't. Just 
to stay away from them. Okay, this is a very important move because now I'm attacking this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's very smart because now they can play this. <sighs> All right, I'll just wait. I'll just wait and see what they want to do. They want to do that, which is smart. I'll stay here with the rook. I'm not moving much. I'm just waiting, hoping for a blunder. I don't know if you know how I'm feeling right now, but I really... <sighs> there is anger and, and tilt inside me. And this is one suggestion that I feel like I need to give yourself, and especially myself. And this, when you do a blunder, when you have a winning position, then you blunder it away. The only way not to tilt even more is to forgive yourself. Now, am I able to forgive myself? No. <laughs> but in theory, that's what I should do. Now, where is this king going? I'll give a check. I mean, the king is trying to go active, so I will not even give a check. I will just stay there with my rook. And at some point, I should try to bring my knight back to the party and try to be annoying with the king. Maybe a knight on e5 could be a good idea. So guys, I officially forgive myself. As for the big blunder I made, it's okay. It's for content. <laughs> Please like the video so I can really forgive myself. <laughs> At least it was for good content, you know? Anyway, how to how we can try to come back is to activate the knight. This was a very nice route. My opponent is also playing quite nicely. I, I really have to say that. Because they were improving this pawn. And now this move is also a possibility. I will play knight there. I mean, it's, it's like hoping for this fork. The problem is that even after this, even if they blunder, they can take there. After I take, they take here and I take there and this endgame is lost. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. Okay, I will try to wait. I will try to wait. If the rook goes there, I will just move my rook backwards. There we go. I'm trying to say, oh, please don't look at this move. Please. please. Maybe they push the pawn, you know. <laughs> just push the pawn, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just pushing that. It's a great idea. Or king g7. Don't move the king away. This would be like a very good move to move that just the king away to avoid this check or at least to avoid that the check is really annoying. Ooh, I think someone blundered. <laughs> Let's go. Nice. That's really nice. And now once this rook takes, I need to ask myself, can I pre can I in in between gives this check? This is good. If the king is taking back. But it's bad when the king goes there. Because I would lose a piece. So I'm just taking here. And now we have this position that is still completely lost. But we can fight. huh? We can fight. Because those pawns are, are hanging. Especially like the pawn on d4. They can now take it. I will go with the bishop back here. Because I'm protecting this pawn. And I'm ready to take there. Which would lead to the activation of my rook. What's the best move in your opinion for them? I think the best move is king g5. Just improving the king, activate, uh, protecting this pawn, and then this pawn can start to be really dangerous. And if I take there, you can take back with the pawn. The knight is well protected. I think it's decent. Also, maybe taking there first is a good idea. And once I take, now maybe king g5. Or this move. Oh, but this is blundering a pawn, right? This blunders the pawn. Now, still, this pawn is really strong. But you know, okay, I'm going to take everything, huh? Everything you offer me, I'm gonna take. And maybe this pawn, pass pawn, could win me the game. Remember, in the end game, pass pawns are way stronger if they are on the side of the board. Because, like, this pawn is well guarded. I'm taking here. Is well guarded by my king and my bishop. So it's actually quite okay. Instead, this pawn is not going to be simple to to defend it. I'm thinking about taking there and then taking here. But you know what? I'm just pushing this. I'm just going to promote it. I'm just going to run that pawn to the glory. Yeah. That's what is happening today. To the glory. Vamos. Mm, I maybe give this check first. Yeah. Let's give this check first. Even if this pawn can be pushed. Okay. Good, 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 good. Now, I have to be careful. Let's give this check first. Because now this pawn is hanging. So it's not simple. Let's give another check. And now we go there. So we are back to protect this pawn. I don't want to lose it. 
it's a very important one because now it's the bishop is cutting off my rook that cannot join the party let's just play rook there maybe one day we are just going to take the pawn now i could think about taking there but i will just push this one i want to make it very 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 scary for them what about knight there Ooh, i see what can we play let's play rook here i want to make this knight feel uncomfortable hmm the rook is behind now this promotion can be something that's a problem guys i will go there i might be in big trouble maybe this is just going to be a draw i'll, I'll go there after bim boom I, i'm able to take this pawn at least yeah either we make a draw or we win the pawn end game this could be a very fun idea i'm going to take there then i'm going to trade the rooks whoop just in time guys just in time just in time all right we are going to take that pawn as well there we go and if they trade i think the pawn end game is lost because this king is way oh nice it's too far away the king is just not in time to protect the pawn and i'm going to have a real fun time <laughs> let's 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 avoid let's block the king from pushing for look at this look at this this is called opposition in chess once you're saying hello to your opponent king and there we have a queen everyone do you know how to give mate with a queen and a king <laughs> you just bring your oh you just bring your opponent king to the corner let's not sell mate maybe let's give a check and another check i'm struggling to give mate it's long time that i actually don't uh repeat the technique but i think it should be all right ggs it was all good up to this point where we were basically winning and now this is not really the move I should have played. Uh, queen f3 could be a good way to control the square. And then I can slowly play e3, bishop there, take this knight, and I will have an extra piece. Um, also, like e3, this directly is a great idea. I like queen f3 because you can castle at any point. Uh, also, knight d1 and knight here is a great way. You just trade off this knight and then you develop your pieces. I prefer more this one. It looks so much more natural. Anyway. The London was a success here. All right, this has to be the perfect London. It's, your, it's my last chance to play this opening and to make my coach, Alex, proud. Let's go. Okay, they are copy. You told me about the copycat. I don't remember. If the copycat, if the copycat, what do I have? I don't remember. Okay, I will just... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just bring everything out here. And then I will take with the C pawn. That's what Alex said. Yeah. This, and now we take with this pawn. Let's go. Oh, no, they went back. So now I will go with the knight there following a different plan. And I want them to take there. Take here. I will again do this. Alex, you didn't tell me. Never mind. We will try to develop the pieces as usual. Let's just castle. Yo. Okay, now he's set to take usually with the pawn. Am I able to protect there? Let's take with the pawn. This is everything scripted by Alex Banzea. Now the knight is there. And I think like the other knight wants also to go there. I could play maybe this and then f4. Trying to protect this pawn. Now they are taking and I take with the pawn. And basically I have what I wanted. I like it. This is like perfectly approved by Alex Banzea. I hope. <laughs> So I could, the queen here is looking at this pawn, I will just push there, and then I, I think I will just develop my pieces on the king's side, on the queen's side, sorry. So knight there, rook c1, maybe knight b5, maybe queen b3, looking at the weaknesses. Let's go, queen b3, just looking at that pawn, why not? My opponent cannot do much on the king's side, because this pawn is blocking everything. The knight cannot be moved, well this pawn could be moved, but then, then I'm taking and then taking there. I'll go with the rook here activation on the c file if the knight goes there they're attacking the queen but i can simply move my queen there i'm attacking knight number one and knight number two i feel it's a good time to move this knight away maybe my knight is going to approach this square but actually i believe that i'm just going to double the rooks here preparing my pieces and there we go this h6 is a very unuseful move so I'm not impressed. I'm taking here. And as I said, every time. Now my opponent really didn't have ideas anymore. You see, they started to play h6. f6. They were like, okay, what am I going to play here? I'm going to take to win this pawn now. That was a blunder. 
Oh my god. Okay, now we have to focus because this could be a perfect, a perfect game. I don't have to blunder. We need to make our coach proud. The rook is attacking the bishop, but I can protect it by taking a pawn, attacking the rook, attacking the knight. Oh boy, I think we are getting there. We get to a nice, perfect win with the London system. Okay, the rook is moved, they are threatening mate. But I'm first taking the queen, uh, sorry, the rook with the check. And then I will be simply protecting this mate. With the bishop going all the way back and say, goodbye, your hopes. Okay, you still try, they still try, you know, they want to push there. And then take your, I could at the same time just take two knights. And I think I will do that. I can also just play h4. I am attacking the queen, blocking the pawn. There are two knights that are hanging. I think they might resign here. Wait, they moved the knight? And who is saving the queen? <laughs> that is not how you do it. <laughs> the moment of the truth. Was this a great game? Yes! 96.5! Alex, are you proud of me? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If yes, remember to like and subscribe. And make sure to also subscribe to Alex Banzea that helped me so much for this video. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Ciao, ciao!